Hello, I'm Georgia Shakti Hill, and I want to welcome you to Living in Balance. Our program today is called The Enlightened Dowser. We're going to be talking about dowsing, that ancient blend of art and science. But we're going to look at, be looking at it from a spiritual perspective, so come join us. I took the liberty of calling Joey Korn the enlightened dowser. He said he's aspiring to that, but he's not real sure that he can claim that yet. But I'd like to welcome you. Thank you, thank you. You have thank written you. a book about it, and this has been a book that you have revised maybe nine times. Right. And it's called Dowsing a Path to Enlightenment. Right. And you said that it has really helped you move along your own personal spiritual path. Definitely. I saw Dan I, met, I learned to douse when I was, well, in 1986. And I immediately saw it as a spiritual tool. And, uh, and it has taken me, um, it's, it's made me ever more soundly on my path, helped me step ever more soundly on my path to enlightenment. Well, you know, not everyone knows what dowsing is. Now, sort of vaguely, they'll say, well, isn't that how you find water? That's how it started. Okay. And but... it's with a forked stick from a tree, a branch. Okay. And uh, now there are many different kinds of dowsing tools, but basically dowsing is a process to tune into the subtle energies that are everywhere around us. And it, it can help us realize that we are electrical beings living in an electrical universe or uh, beings of light living in a sea of light. And it's sort of as if it's back in again to dows, and people do it to answer questions in their life um, and also to find of what might be like negative energies or positive energies. So for a while though, only water was what it was used for, to find yeah, water. That's how it started, finding water. But once you realize that you're not finding the physical water, the substance of the water, you're finding the energy of the water, uh -huh. then you can take the leap and, and realize that you can, you can tune into anything that you can think of. So in, somehow your mind knows the energy frequency of the things, that, of just about anything you're looking for. And uh, you hold that intent in your mind, and then you get dowsing reactions to whatever you're looking for. And you think of the dowsing rods as being an extension of who you are, of, right. of you. Okay, so right. they're just more open to or responsive to energies? They, they help you tune in to the, everything. It's like a radio, tuning a radio. And uh, you tune into certain frequencies that you hold in your intent. And a lot of people think that the rods are the dowser, or the pendulum are the dowsing, to, are the dowsers. But you are the dowser. The energies around us and around you affect you every single moment of your life, and and the energies within you. And dowsing can help you tune into those energies and find them. Okay. And you actually have put the energies in like three categories. That's how you like categories. to look at them. Okay. Very broad. Okay. And the energies are beneficial right. and clear, okay, is how you look at them. Right, okay. right. And those are, um, in all of our environment, we would find some beneficial yeah, if, we, if you have a fairly happy, healthy life, your, your environment and your being will be, you know, full of beneficial energies. Okay. Now there's also detrimental. And these are energies that weaken you. The beneficial en energies strengthen you. I call it clear because I believe these energies are like conductors of the life force, and clear lets the light pass through freely. Um, detrimental would be it weak. They weaken you. And uh, many dowsers believe over long periods of time they can make you sick, detrimental energies. And, and they, uh, m most dowsers think that they're like natural forces of the earth, like underground streams. The energy of an underground stream can carry a detrimental energy to uh -huh. it that weakens you. And you believe then that that blocks the energy, so you call that then opaque. And so right. it's like the energy can't get through. And then there's the, the third type of energy is basically neutral. Neutral. So right. a little cloudy. They don't, yeah, they don't. These energies, they don't affect us one way or another. Okay. What makes my work different from most dowsers who even work with these energies is that I realize that we affect these energies as much as they affect us. In fact, I believe that each of us creates our own unique energy environment in our homes, in our offices, in our living spaces, with our thoughts, our emotions, our actions, our fears, our anxieties, and uh, the energies are the subtle energies, which are invisible beams of light and waves of light. Um, these energies are a reflection of your health and well-being or lack thereof. Now, wh how do you relate that to our aura, to our, what is talked about as our own personal energy field that is a certain distance out from us and that pe 
people can read and that people, some people see, and that has also light and dark spots and so forth. Right. You, you can douse the aura, and I like to more douse the auric field. And when you douse for the energy field or the auric field, and then you, and you do enough of the douse, and you, you'll find that it make, you, you are a vortex that your energy spirals out from you and then back to you all the time. You're a living vortex. And so that I'm be... always sending out energy and it's always coming back to me and we're always exchanging energy. Right. You and I, all for the example, time. are now. Right now we're exchanging energy, not just thoughts and ideas and words, but energy. Because you're in my space and I'm in your space. It's right. just like that. And you have the dowsing rods and you, there are all kinds of different ones. Do you want to show us those? Yes. These are some of your favorites. These and are. You I like them. Me... These are called L rods, mainly okay. because they're shaped like an L. Right. And and, uh, and these have the added effect of having antennas attached to them. Uh -huh. And it sort of reminds you that the, you're tuning in to frequencies, to energy frequencies. And um, th this is one dowsing reaction. With, that's my, what I use the most, uh -huh. pointing to, uh, opening to point in opposite directions. This would be like a search position. And this would be another dowsing reaction. And, um, and, and some people use L rods um, for yes and no questions, but most people use the pendulum for that. For the dowsing. Right. Now, if we look at these closely, um, mm -hmm. the way that you do not control them is because they slip into this. And so if we take a look at that, it's like you're not moving it because well, you're holding down here. So it's actually on free play. Yeah, but, but I, you know, I sort of, um, dowser, dowsers in recent years have realized that it, they are, there are actually minute, min, you know, minuscule movements within your body uh -huh. that causes the dowsing reaction. So to a certain extent, what you're doing with dowsing is you're training your body to get these, some dowsers would take exception to this, uh -huh. but you're training your body to, get to, to make these minuscule movements as a result of the energies that are around you, the energies that you're looking so for. So that's okay that you're contributing yeah. to the movement and you don't have a problem with that. I don't that. have a problem with that at all. What you're doing, your body is actually, again, you're the dowser. Uh -huh. This simply accentuates what's going on within your body, within your energy, and, and then you can feel it. There, there is, there's no doubt once you do a little dowsing, there's no doubt that the that this is something that's really happening. Now, I asked you to uh, douse the set because right. I felt that because we spend so much time here and so many positive things are said and so many wonderful people sit in that chair. Right, right. <laughs> and, and, the, and that chair. Yeah, one, thank you. One wonderful person. <laughs> and so with that, um, there should be energy here that you could, that you could feel, that Absolutely. you could douse. And, and right. what would you... If you and if you were to do that, what would we find out about that energy? Well, well we, what, what what I've already found uh -huh. is that, that that there are several what I call beams of light, invisible beams of, of light suspended in time and space. There and there are several that intersect where the, where this chair is and intersect where somebody would where you sit and then where I where your guest sits. Okay. Your guest. It. And um, these beams of light, where they intersect, they're suspended in time and space. And where they intersect, they create a little vortex, which you might call a mini power spot. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So a little power spot is created. But also because we have all of the technical things out here as far as our cameras right. and um, all of the different machinery and things, we're in a very powerful electromagnetic, electromagnetic field. Zone, right. Now you feel that those can be negative and we can switch those to let's positive? Call them, let's call them weakening or detrimental. Okay. But there are also there are bands of them. Yeah. A lot of people um, look at EMF and they, they only think of EMF, the electromagnetic fields coming from wires and equipment and appliances, microwave ovens, televisions, computer screens, uh -huh. as being detrimental or bad for you. And I find, and this is again what makes my work different, I find and, that we can simply change these energies, transmute them to be beneficial. I think all these energies, the energies of underground streams and, and other natural forces of the earth, the energies of EMF that come from appliances, these beams of light suspended in time and space, right. they can either carry an energy that's detrimental to us, neutral to us, or, or beneficial, beneficial to us. If you find energies that are detrimental to us, that weaken yes. us, a, simply, a simple, properly stated, sincere prayer will change it immediately to be beneficial. So that's Even the, EMF. the enlightened dowser. That's that aspect there because what you're saying is we can change that and it is the power of prayer power that of prayer. can do that right. and it is just that
simple. Just that easy. Dowsers, a lot of dowsers who work with these energies do various things when they find detrimental energies, like an underground stream that might course deep under the ground but right under your bed. Uh -huh. A lot of dowsers think, that's, think that that's not good. And um, they'll do things like hammering rods into the ground called earth acupuncture. Oh, I love that. Earth acupuncture. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and it actually will block the energies or, or bounce uh -huh. them off. And you can find all that with dowsing. Well, I find that we want these energies in our living environment. We just want them to be beneficial. Uh -huh. And again, a, a prayer will do it. So a the properly prayer, stated. properly stated, has intention of changing what would be detrimental to beneficial. And it's, right. you can do that. And you, it's not just what I found um, with my, with, I found that, dow first of all, I consider dowsing a sacred process. And I consider dowsing tools to be sacred tools. And with, you can actually f make, not only change things from detrimental to beneficial, but you can bring in new beneficial energies I, and, I, and create a unique energy configuration to bring whatever you really are wanting to bring in, what you desire, and what you, wanna, what you wanna bring into your life, uh -huh. you can call that in with prayer. And I find that with, pr sincere prayer, energies change within you and around you, and you can you can see that with dowsing okay. and experience it. Well, we're going to go into a whole other concept of right. how you've developed this, and it's called Two Lights of the Soul. Fascinating information, but I think we should take a break first. Okay. And when we do, we'll come back and we'll be talking more about dowsing and also more about Joey. I think people should get to know you as okay. an author, too. So if you will stay tuned, we will be back with the Enlightened Dowser. <laughs> And if you are just joining us, I am Georgia Shakti Hill, and I am interviewing the enlightened dowser, Joey Korn. Welcome again. And um, you have authored the book, again, Dowsing a Path to Enlightenment. And as I said, you keep revising it. But you also are well known for another book that you have written, and that is called Abe's Story. And it's a Holocaust memoir that you rewrote your father's story. Right. My dad died when I was 19. He spent his entire... Uh, well, the entire wo World War II, the, from the beginning of, of the war till the end, in Nazi prisons, uh, ghettos, and concentration camps. Uh -huh. And he uh, wrote, he began writing his memoirs 25 years later. He died when I was 19, and he left a rough draft, which I finally turned into a publishable manuscript. And it was it was originally published in 1995. So it's a real uh, work of love. Um, and it's just such an inspiring, wonderful story. It's yeah. just really cool. And you said that, like, your path has taken you on this journey. You've included dowsing now, but you've always been a, a spiritual person on a spiritual path and aware of that Basically for many since, years. Basically, since I was 21. Yeah. And I'm okay. 46 now. 47. <laughs> so, as a grown up, yeah, <laughs> right. as almost a grown all up. My, my, all my adult life, right. <laughs> So um, one of the things we had um, promised we'd talk about were the two lights of the soul. And you said that cre you create a vortex. Each person has a power center because we have these two lights that are crossing in our being. Is that well, what you found? What, what, I've, what I started finding, I'm always asking why, why, why. Okay. And I started finding intersections of two invisible lights at places like chairs and desks and uh, and many intersecting lights around beds uh -huh. and, um, and in, a, in a very unique pattern and and I was wondering why in front of refrigerators in, in front of the, the stove in front of the sink places that you high use areas places that you use and I wondered why is that you know why do these energies come to these high use areas well you came over to our home yesterday right. and where my husband sits on the sofa where I would be and for example that's where you found like these intersecting, intersecting lights. lights which create this power vortex this power center because that's where people spend their time right. and their energy so and the they, vortexes are created or vortices as they right. call them. Uh -huh. okay. and that's exactly right and um, but but what I've realized is that we each have two beams of light, invisible light, that that intersect us wherever we go. Uh -huh. They go with us. And and these two beams of light, I call the two lights of the soul, I believe that they anchor the soul to the body uh -huh. and that they, they are how we relate to everything else, everyone else, and all, especially the energies around us. Now we have, from biblical times, we have some um, 
beautiful paintings. And Christ is always shown with the intersecting light. Well, let's say often. In often. a lot of the Catholic icons, uh -huh. what, what I realized, I, I'd been teaching in my workshops and lecture, lectures about the two lights of the soul for uh -huh. about a year that each of us has in our, li in our lives. And, uh -huh. and then it, I realized one day, I just noticed it on a, on a Catholic icon, that that's the two lights of the soul, the cross that's, that's at Jesus' head. Um, and it is, I thought, must, it could, must be the two lights. It must be symbolic of the two lights, not the physical cross. Conductors of the life force. And actually, okay. the, um, when, you, when I looked into it in Catholicism, that's called the nimbus, and it does not uh, represent the physical cross. It represents what's called the light of God. Okay. And the, circ the, the little halo effect around his head is called the crown of light. Uh-huh. And uh, so, it, you know, it was obvious to me, you know, he, that, it, that it was representing, at least the two li the lights at, at his head, uh -huh. uh, representing light, not the cross. And also, we had the picture of um, Moses and Elijah, and they too had that, the intersecting... Right, these come, right, these come from stained glass windows at uh -huh. the Sacred Heart, uh, what used to be a church, at this, it's now a cultural center in Augusta. Uh -huh. And that, that one with Moses and Elijah, um, is from a famous painting called The Transfiguration. And it shows Moses with literally two beams of light intersecting his right. head, at his head. And with a man, you feel that we also have those two, that there is the intersecting With human beings, yeah, with, with all beings. of us. Yeah. And now right. Moses and Jesus, Jesus are always intersecting at the third eye, representing cosmic consciousness. Uh -huh. um, and I find that we typically, they represent, they're intersecting us typically from the, the lower abdomen to the neck. Mm -hmm. And when you did me, for example, it was at the heart at your center. Heart. Right, your heart just center. about there. Okay. Unconditional love. Now, these, that's it, <laughs> these patterns also, um, and we're only going to touch upon this because right. this is something that in your study of the Kabbalah, which is Jewish mysticism, mm -hmm. you have found that there are patterns of light that are created that are not unlike the patterns of light, the Kabbalah, or the Tree of Life. Well, what I'm picked. finding is that my work, you know, I'm Jewish, mm -hmm. and even, and um, and I've gone the la my whole adult life seemingly studying other traditions, and mm -hmm. I find that it all comes right back to my G Jewish roots, and that that what I'm working with now. Help, I help, what I do is I help people understand their unlimited potential as spiritual beings mm -hmm. and, of light. And this is, the Kabbalah is all about light. And what I'm, what I'm learning, and, and Kabbalah is at the core of Jewish mysticism, in case people haven't heard of what the Kabbalah is. It's, uh -huh. And it's teachings, and it's supposed to be like the spiritual Torah, the spiritual Old Testament that was handed down orally. And my work just fits beautifully in with, with Kabbalistic teachings. Uh -huh. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, when yeah. you've looked at everything and then you've come back. And I feel, like I've, I feel that I've made discoveries that really mm -hmm. tie directly to Kabbalah. Now, you use the pendulum, and the pendulum, you said, um, also douses for energies. Well, we douse. In, in, in the, okay. This is just a different tool for tuning into the same energies in different ways. Okay. Do you want to show us yours? Sure. And the, the concept here of the pendulum as a dowsing. Well, some people tool. use um, the pendulum for yes and no answers, and uh -huh. they might. This might represent a yes, and this might represent a no, and um, a lot of people consider it there, that the pendulum is giving them the answers. But again, it's your own by your own being that does that. Okay, so we're not consciously controlling them, but you think we are controlling it in in a in a yes, in a way. Okay. Um, what you're doing is tuning in more to your intuitive side, tuning in more to your higher self, hopefully. Uh -huh. And that's and so that's where your intent should be. But I use a pendulum in a different way. I use the pendulum in my prayer work. As I said, I, I find that when we pray, energies change around us. Uh -huh. So I call, I use that consciously in my prayer in my prayer. I call for energies to change within me and around me or within others and around them to bring whatever I want into my life. So it is a healing tool. And this is all that your be. work comes to then is that you recognize those energies and you can use it for healing with using prayer? Yeah, actually it's the prayer that's, that brings the healing, I think, and, and the intent. And I just use this, the pendulum as a signal. It keeps me on task. It helps me tune into the energies. Uh -huh. And I use it as a signal that tells me, okay, the work that you've called for is complete for now. Now you said that you would bless 
our, you would say, a prayer for the set, for the show, yes. and so forth. Right. And this is something that you do, like you did in our home yesterday. Right. And you would do that for us now? Yes. What I do, all my prayers begin the same and they end the same. And in the middle, I stick my intent, okay. what I want to bring into my life. Okay. And it sort of transforms pray, personal prayer from a pleading to a beckoning for energies to be come in to be conducive to what you want to bring into your life is the way I do it. Okay. So I would start, I'm actually swinging this. Uh -huh. Okay. My, I'm, Intentionally I'm making, and you know and then, But when it goes to the left and to the right, that's a tendency that I'm not, that I'm not controlling. Okay? okay. And I just start with, if it be thy will, may the powers of nature converge to charge this area with the life force, to create a unique, a unique energy configuration, to bring healing and balance to all who come here, and to, to help Georgia in her efforts, and to draw to her the right guests at the right time, to help the, the viewing audience draw ever closer to their highest potential as spiritual beings, ever closer to the universal one, and to bring healing and balance into their lives, for now and into the future, for as long as is appropriate. Amen. Now, you, to me, the work is already done. That uh -huh. was my signal. When it returned to what I call my search posi position and stayed there, uh -huh. that told me that, that the work that I was calling for, the energy changes that I was calling for were already complete before I even finished the prayer. It's the intent that matters, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it takes your word, with words, it takes a little longer sometimes. So when it stayed in my search position, that's my signal that we're done. And the energies really did change just then. Uh -huh. So you have blessed us and set an intention for all of our future sh shows to right. serve our audience well. And, and to draw the right us. people to you exactly. that you might want to interview okay. to, and to also bless your audience as well. Yeah, I, I think that's wonderful. I think you are serving the planet well <laughs> as a dowser. And it's a very interesting approach that you have taken. And uh, as you said, this is, your, this is your gift now that you feel that you're going to be sharing. Yeah, I, I do. I feel it's a um, gift that was given to me. I've, I've made many discoveries in my work as a dowser uh -huh. that I, that are going on. But I just feel like it's discoveries about life that goes on behind the scenes in life all the time, whether we know it or not. Yes. And dowsing can help us tune into that. And when we realize that these energies are around us and that we're changing them all the time, uh -huh. um, including bringing in detrimentals, then we can right. take control of that process and make energies beneficial to us. Wonderful. Thank you, Joey. <laughs> Thank you. And if you would like to be in touch with Joey and perhaps uh, get one of his books, and also we always love to hear from you, and then some parting thoughts. Stay tuned. I love to bring different techniques and ideas to you so that you can look at what might work for you, what could make a difference in your life, another step on your path too, and it might be dowsing. So to live in balance in mind, body, and spirit, perhaps dowsing could assist you. Until next time, I'm Georgia Shakti Hill. May you be well, happy, and peaceful.